Hello, welcome to my tutorial. In this video, I'm going to talk about the use of for loops. All right, and we're not going to do anything interesting. We're just going to look at the syntax of. Ideally, you already know how to use a some some form of a while loop. Uh, that's going to make everything make a lot more sense. But if you just want to start out with for loops, you can try. But uh, I wouldn't expect it to go that well. So I've got my form here. I've got a list box called list print, button called button print. I'm going to double click on button print jump over to code design and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a while loop and I think the best way to talk about what a for loop is is by contrasting it with a while loop so if we're using a while loop we actually have to create a counter so dim i as integer and we need to give it a starting value let's say we want to print out the numbers between 10 and 20 okay arbitrary that means I want to start at 10 and I want to do this while i is less than or equal to 20. All right, so I'm going fast at this point because I'm assuming you've already seen some videos on while loops. So start at 10, count to 20, and I want to count by ones. So i plus equals one. So this means each time we get to this point, add one to our i, and I want to display the contents to that list box. So list box dot items dot add. And I want to add i itself. So I'm starting at 10, counting toward counting 20, and I'm counting by one. So when I go to run this thing and print, I get 10 through 20. Sounds good. All right. Notice it's quite a bit different than the other examples I've done. So I don't want to do a do while loop. Let's say I want to solve this problem using a for loop. So I like to contrast these. The difference is we're still going to have the idea of a counter, a starting value, and a finishing value, but uh, it's it's we don't declare the, the variable explicitly. That's really the big difference here. So I'm going to do a keyword for, and so and now I need to give my counter a name. I'm still going to go with I'm going to go with J because I've already used I. So for J as in integer. All right. So I just declared my variable. Um, equals let's say 1 2 10 all right that's my syntax so let's look at what I did so in a while loop this block you know 5 through 10 I had to create my variable initialize my variable and increment my variable in a for loop I'm creating my variable on the fly initializing it on the fly and I'm setting up the condition on the fly and my incrementation is implicit all right, so I'm not going to go in here and write something like j equals j plus 1 because it's automatically going to add 1. Let me hack this. You know, I'll comment this guy out so you can just look at it. And I want this thing to go list print dot items dot add. And I want to add j because it's the name of my variable. Now let's run this. I'm telling you it's probably going to print out between 1 and 10. So F5 to run. And it prints out the numbers between 1 and 10. Notice it does the same thing that I could do with a while or an until loop. Instead of the ex explicitly creating my variable, I'm just creating it on the fly. The really interesting thing, and I say this a little more foolproof, you are it's a little bit um, harder to create an infinite loop because it's going to increment. Most of the times when your while loops go bad, it's because of this, flawed line 9. And so here's an interesting one. Let's say I want to print out the odd numbers between 1 and 100. All right, so if I want to go to 100, then I'm going to change this to 100. And so if you remember how I did this before, I, I counted by twos, basically. So if I want to count by something other than 1, then I say step. And so by default, it's just step 1. That means count by 1s. If I want to count by twos, then I say step 2. And now I'm going to be that's the equivalent of writing j equals j plus 2. Now, if I run this thing, you can see that I'm counting by twos. It's not uncommon to want to go backwards through some data, right? So if I wanted to go backwards, I'd probably say from 100 to 1. And my step value, if I wanted to go backwards, is going to be negative 1. Well, let's see how this works. I print, and you can see what's happening. In this way, I mean, you can see why people would like this because it's a little more uh, foolproof. You're not going to set up as many infinite loops doing this. 
but you also have to understand the syntax. Probably not a great idea to go to this before you understand this, because this just kind of looks like a bunch of magical words strung together. The uh, biggest strength of this is that whether you are writing Visual Basic, uh, Java, some form of C, for loops, uh, the syntax is always similar. So while it looks intimidating to someone who's just starting out, you really only have to learn it one time, and, and the rest of the differences are going to be small. So that's for loops. I hope to make a uh, another video soon. We'll see how time goes. Thanks for watching.